Have you ever had the thought, if I'm so smart, why is this so tough, right? Weight loss or anything else. Today, I'm going to talk about weight loss. Have you ever had the thought, if I'm so smart, why is weight loss so tough? Well, first off, you're not alone. But what I'm going to do is over the next couple of minutes, however long this video takes, I'm going to go over actually kind of a spectrum of where you can get stuck. Most people think it's just, okay, I don't know enough about weight loss, whether it's nutrition or working out or recovery or little minutia, which supplement should I take? But rarely is that actually the issue. Now, as you get better and better and better at all this stuff, you do may need to get some more info, but again, I'll get into that. But typically, there's two other parts of the spectrum of stuff that can stop you up uh, that most people miss, most weight loss programs miss and all that stuff. And anyways, I want to share it with you. So, <clears throat> Uh, and also, like, you're a really smart person. I know you know that, you know, apples are healthy for you. So let's get into it. Uh, so who's this video for? Listen, if you have are just interested in getting healthier, you, you've decided that today's the day, this video is for you. And whether you need to lose weight, you need to transform your body, you need to get toned, you, whatever it is, this is important. Next up, if you've tried stuff in the past... That doesn't mean that you're a failure or you're never going to see success. In fact, I'm going to go over it today. Um, you know, you can make progress. Really, again, like I said, you may just be focusing on the wrong things, trying to figure out kind of what went wrong. And then lastly, if you've also vowed like this is, I'm going to do one more diet. It's going to be different this time. I want to make sure that you're putting the energy and the focus into the right things so that you can see progress, not trying to, learn something new about losing weight, right? Which a lot of the times is you're just going to be reading the same info. So again, if you've ever had the thought, if I'm so smart, why is weight loss so tough? Number one is you're not alone, okay? Everyone has had this thought. Maybe you've never heard someone say it out loud, but we are all going through all this stuff, right? Number two Weight loss is tough not because you lack the info, okay? If you do lack the info, it's it's a very, very quick fix, right? If you want to understand how to figure out how many calories are in an apple or a bag of chips, that is a skill or a piece of info we can get to you very, very quickly. And obviously, if you work with a coach like myself, I own Journeyman Fitness and I coach people through all this stuff, you know, we can tell you, okay, this is how to do it. And then, you know, let's practice doing this a couple of times to make sure that you're pretty confident in it. <clears throat> if you're really trying to solve an issue, you know, a lot of the times it's not a logical issue, but in fact, it's emotion, it's an emotional issue. So, uh, and, and, you know, by emotional, I mean, I don't, uh, your emotions aren't the problem. It's how you're handling your emotions. And I'll get into that in a second. All right. So imagine that progress is you're trying to build a skyscraper as you're, you know, as you're kind of going through this journey, it's like you're building a skyscraper. OK, and there's three parts to the skyscraper in to keep it very simple. You've got the foundation, which is everything that is from the ground below. Right. So the higher the skyscraper you want to go, the lower you've got to build the foundation. OK, the deeper into the ground. Now, on top of the foundation, obviously, we've got the skyscraper. This is the, the physical structure that rises up as high as the skyscraper wants to go. This is, you know, the the uh, steel and the structure and the plants and all that kind of stuff. And then <clears throat> lastly, we have the livable part. So this is kind of everything that wraps around the, the structure, the steel and all that stuff. These are the elevators and the windows and the drywall and the electrical and basically the stuff that makes it livable. Now, the, uh, you know, the livable parts, the windows, the electrical, the all that stuff, this is, these, this is the info and the skills. This stuff is important. Obviously, you can't live in the skyscraper, you can't live in this building, you can't operate in it without it. But if you don't have the other two parts, right, the, the physical skyscraper, the building, the steel that goes up, those are your thoughts. And if you don't have the foundation, these are your beliefs, then it doesn't matter what window you choose, right? Because the skyscraper is not going to be able to support itself without these three parts. 
And so most people, most diet programs, most, um, you know, hey, listen, I'm going to lose weight. What we do is we focus on the livable parts. We focus on the info. We focus on the skills. And like I said, you need you need these things, right? To, to be in the skyscraper, to have a skyscraper worth being inside of, you need this. But obviously, if this, you know, the physical structure of the skyscraper is flawed or the foundation that it's built on is either not deep enough or not well built, then again, it doesn't really matter what the windows are, what elevator, you know, the desk you buy for somebody inside the skyscraper. So here we go. Figuring out the issues. Okay, so now that we kind of know we're building this skyscraper and there's three parts. We got the, the logical part, which is the skills, the info. We got the skyscraper, which is your thoughts and emotions. And then lastly, we've got the foundation. We've got the beliefs. Somewhere along that spectrum is your current obstacle to making some progress. And again, it could be one of three things. Uh, you know, one week it could be the thoughts you have. The, the You know, two weeks later, it could be a belief that you bump up against. It's a constantly evolving process, but it's going to be somewhere along that spectrum and figuring out what that issue is, is paramount to you busting through the plateau. Okay, so let's break down the way. So first off, let's go into the logical stuff. So you start to lose weight. The weight loss stalls. We've all been there. We've all hit a plateau. It's a very normal part. Uh, weight loss stalls. Where do you think it comes from? Is it from not knowing how much you eat, not understanding how to weigh and measure or track the food that you have, whether it's just by your eyeballs or you're using your hand to measure against or whatever? Are you consistent with your workouts? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting the quality sleep? Are you drinking enough water? Right? All those things. These are, you know, do you know great recipes you can cook for your family? Do you know how to shop at the supermarket? Do you know how to... Uh, you know, prep your food before you put it in the fridge, all these things. All those things are really, really important. And if you don't have these skills, whether now or later when it becomes a problem, obviously you need to get them. And we can also teach it to you very quickly. Um, these things are kind of, like I said, kind of surface level. They're not that deep. They're important, but we can fix that really, really quickly. Now, <clears throat> when you look at something like drinking enough water, right, was the, you know, was the issue really, uh, you know, I didn't know how much water I should drink every day? Or is it another thing? You know, is there another obstacle that's kind of related? You know, for instance, like going to bed at night? Is the issue really, oh, I didn't know I should go to bed at the same time every night and get seven hours of sleep? Or was it that going to bed at that time gets in the way of me time? And then you have the thought of, you know, well, when is it going to be my turn during the day to relax and de-stress, right? So that's kind of where we start getting into not just the logical stuff, but the emotional stuff, right? If it feels unfair to go to bed early because you don't get any of your time, that's not a knowledge issue. That's an emotional issue. So let's jump into that. So let's talk about the skyscraper. This is the physical, you know, in this analogy, this is the physical building that comes up out of the ground, right? This is all the, the thoughts and the emotions that kind of go on. We all, going throughout the day, have thoughts, right? And I think the, the number is in the tens of thousands of thoughts a day. Not all of them create emotions out of you, but some of them will create pretty strong emotions. And the stronger the emotion, the greater the reaction from you, right? At the base of ourself, the most primal, uh, you know, Neanderthal, you know, behavior of us is we're always motivated to go towards pleasure and away from discomfort or danger okay so you know to use that bed analogy going to bed early is a very logical thing like we understand you know if any if it was a friend of yours and they're like man i'm really struggling i'm tired all the time i'm not recovering my workouts suck and they're like yeah you just need to go to bed earlier just go to bed like an hour earlier when you tell it to somebody else and there's no emotion attached to it it's very easy Right. But when it comes to you, you may have a thought that is, when do I have time for me? All right. Or to put it not in a question, but into a statement, I don't have enough me time. I don't I can't unwind from the day. I can't de-stress. And you may 
it may feel unfair. You may get angry, you may get frustrated, and those emotions are, you know, negative, quote unquote, and they can be really uncomfortable at times. And so obviously what are you going to do is you're going to kind of fight that emotion, you know, try to get away from that uncomfortable emotion of I don't have enough me time and go towards something pleasurable, which is, you know, sitting on the couch and watching Netflix and all that stuff, which is which is way more fun. Um, now, it, again, to just to illustrate, is it do we need to address the fact that you uh, you know, don't know that sleep is good for you or that you're not getting enough sleep? Or do we need to address these thoughts that you have about th how this is unfair and that's uncomfortable to you and then come up with a plan that, you know, actually gets you excited about going to bed at a reasonable time and not spending hours and hours and hours sitting on the couch, right? Another example, you have a healthy dinner plan for both your family as well as yourself. This is kind of this is part of your plan. You know, it kind of fits your plan. You know that you keep doing this day after day after day. You're going to see progress and life is good. But it was a really stressful day. You had to fire somebody, right? I had a client who had had to fire somebody who was underperforming. We had all these reviews and he's like, yeah, it's just a really stressful day today. Day today for, for uh, it's a really stressful day for me t today. I have to fire somebody. We've known this is coming up and I'm not looking forward to it, blah, 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 right? You have this healthy dinner. You're stressed out because you had to fire somebody. You're thinking about that person, right? You have this thought, a slice of birthday cake will help me distress after this long day, right? Do I actually need more info or knowledge here? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, so kind of is... As we kind of run up into these obstacles, you know, are we having these thoughts, aka that generate these emotions that are kind of driving us to take these different actions, right? Can we handle these uncomfortable emotions in the moment? Do we have a plan? Uh, you know, is there something that's reasonable that, that actually gets you excited about kind of doing the thing that's going to move the ball down the down the field? All these things. Now, deeper along the spectrum, kind of deeper in the skyscraper that we're building, we get to a point where we bump up into your beliefs. Now, how are the beliefs different than your thoughts? The thoughts are, are you know, you can have, like I said, you know, tens of thousands of thoughts a day. Some may not mean anything. Some, you know, will generate some emotion. But once you start kind of repeating these thoughts over and over and over again, they become a, a story about you. And then these stories about you if we hold on to them long enough, they become, uh, you know, almost fact about you, right? These are be these are beliefs about you, and rarely do we question these beliefs, right? And these things could be, I'm the big guy, right? You know, whatever that means. I eat a lot. I'm really strong. I, you know, I'm a physical person. I do a lot of work, right? I'm religious, whatever that means to you. Um, you know, I'm never good at sports, whatever that means to you, right? These are not necessarily fact, right? But these are just beliefs that you have. You've probably held on for a really long time. You've also probably learned them when you were a kid. And rarely do you actually question them. Is this actually true? Or is this a fact about me that is unchangeable, right? So anyways, <clears throat> at the belief level, we all have the same issue and these things are called upper limit this is an upper limit problem and basically we kind of have um there's a really cool book it's called uh oh man hold on let me get it's called the big leap it's by a guy named gay hendrix i read it years ago it's a wonderful book it kind of explains this stuff it's like why do we self-sabotage if you want to read this book um he call you know he calls it an internal um, temperature sensor, a thermometer. Basically, there's like kind of a gauge that kind of keeps us at this level. I like to call it, we have our normal, okay? We have, or homeostasis is a good, another good word. We have a spot where we're kind of safe and comfortable in this. We're very, uh, you know, comfortable with 
what's going on right now and any changes to that where we get into the unknown what we want to do is we we want to get back to what's comfortable and this is a, just a human issue right this is a human problem because you know tens of thousands of years ago if you went out of your zone right outside of your village away from your family away from your social group right you could be attacked you could fall and get hurt you, you know basically this was a threat to your survival so it's a very natural human thing to be around things that make are comfortable or you're used to or that's normal so this is what we call our homeostasis and basically in this comfortable zone we have an upper limit where basically when we go past that limit if we see some change we see some progress and we go past that limit of what we think is normal well what we're going to do is we unconsciously will start to sabotage ourselves to bring us back to what we're confident and we see this all the time you know someone wins the lottery and they blow all their money in six months right or you know the uh rock star who makes it famous can't handle the fame or the attention uh, you know, good or for bad, and then, you know, starts to do drugs to kind of temper all that attention, right? So all those things, like, we see all the time, and it, it's also happening to you. It's very normal. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with you. I'm just saying that this is an obstacle that we've got to kind of figure out. So the upper limit problem, right, your, your zone of comfort typically can, uh, these aren't the only reasons, but these are major ones. They can get labeled as I'm fundamentally flawed. There's something wrong with me. Number two, uh, problem with disloyalty or abandonment. Number three is mo money, mo problems, or the more success I get, the more problems I'm going to get. Or number four, what we've got is a fear of outshining others or making other people feel bad. And so examples of this could be, you know, I, you know, like I said, if you've always been the big guy or, um, Or, yeah, so you've always been the big guy. You've always been kind of, you know, the, a little softer around the midsection. You've always been a certain weight because of maybe football in high school or middle school or anything like that. Once you start losing weight, you may sabotage yourself because it kind of conflicts with the identity that you have that you are the big guy. Right? If you start to lose weight, you're no longer the big guy. And then obviously that's conflict. That's uncomfortable. It's all that stuff. Number two, disloyalty and abandonment. You know, if you ever grew up in a family that you know everyone was overweight or everyone had weight problems or everyone you know did diets four times a year and failed at them and then finally you start to see some success it can feel like you're kind of fighting against your family which again is uncomfortable and kind of a threat to your safety and all that stuff so it, you may start to self-sabotage yourself because you feel like you're pulling away from family and friends and kind of again what's comfortable number three this mo money mo problems you know once you start to see some success once you get on the diet and you start to lose weight you may start to sabotage because it may feel like all this work that you're doing to see this success is actually more problems than or uh you know kind of more of a burden than actually the success that you're getting right so you know if you've got a family you've got a spouse you've got kids you're trying to lose weight and you're eating all these diet foods you start to see some success and then you start to you know project weeks in advance you know hey listen i'm gonna lose another 10 pounds what i've got to do to get there is going to be such a burden for my family i don't want to get to that point where my kids have to eat my diet food and my spouse is complaining about all the um you know cauliflower i'm cooking in the oven and all that stuff you may sabotage because you don't want to be a burden to other people right because of your success and then lastly, fear of outshining others. If you've ever been the quiet kid, you don't want to draw attention, and all of a sudden you start losing weight, people will notice. They'll start to make comments, good or bad, and all that attention can be very, very uncomfortable. So you may self-sabotage so that you kind of retreat out of the spotlight. Um, or, you know, if maybe you're losing weight, but your spouse is not losing weight, and your spouse feels really bad about it because they're trying really hard. Well, you could self-sabotage so that you both are kind of in the same, you know, basket. You're, you're both trying it, right? So when you are working on these things, like I said, this is a spectrum of stuff. And one week you may have a problem with the thoughts that you have. 
you know, two weeks later, you may understand, hey, listen, I'm kind of jutting up against an assumption that I've had about myself my entire life. I need to kind of unpack that. And then, you know, four weeks down the road, you may need to get a little bit more refined with how you weigh and measure your food, right? So it's a dynamic, you know, uh, journey that you're going on. All of these things are important. You've got to figure it out. And um, you are, it, wherever you're at in your journey, you can figure this stuff out so that you can continue to make some progress. I'm not saying it's going to be a linear thing, like you're always going to lose weight easily and all that. But if you're struggling, this is a good way of figuring out how to bust through all this stuff. Now, can you figure out all this stuff on your own? Of course, you can figure out all this stuff on your own. You do not need myself. You do not need another coach to help you. However, I will say that when you talk to a coach, you can speed up this whole process like a 10x. You can take years of trial and error and trying to research and learn and practice and implement and all that stuff. You could take years of that and condense it down to months, if not weeks, and then kind of learn skills, um, you know, emotional, uh, you know, adjustment habits and all that kind of stuff uh, so that, you know, you're going to see crazy progress uh, way faster than normal. And also you can be next to a person who will tell you, hey, listen, your breath smells um, in a nice and supportive way because obviously we know like we can't smell our own breath. So a lot of these things, particularly with the thoughts, emotions, and even the beliefs, you may not be aware that this is an issue unless you have somebody who's kind of impartial, right? So if this kind of stuff, if this kind of stuff is interesting, if you're like, hey, listen, this is uh, way kind of deeper um, going into problems and obstacles and all that stuff, I'd love to chat with you. Send me a DM. I'd love to chat with you, figure out what's going on, kind of what you think the issue is, spitball some ideas in terms of how we can make some progress, how you can kind of get back on the wagon. And, uh, you know, obviously, if I can help you in the long term and, you know, be your coach, that'd be great. Anyways, hopefully this video was enlightening. You feel like, oh, yeah, like, you know, this is cool stuff. I appreciate it. Forward it to your friends. Again, I'm Mark Roberts. I own Journeyman Fitness. And I help dads, you know, especially deskbound dads, get in the greatest shape that they can for their kids, for their family and themselves. All right. Deuces.